Hey, Science Creators, Mr. Hanson back for the next math video. We are reviewing a circumference, what we talked about a week ago last Friday. So this is additional circumference notes. Quick review of the terms that we talked about with circles and parts of a circle. <clears throat> if we look at this diagram of a circle, it says point A is the center of the circle because it's the same distance from all the points around the circle. The distance from the outside of the circle to point A, which would be this line segment, remember that's called our radius, that's halfway across our circle. The distance all the way across the circle through our center from point A, that's called our diameter, and the distance around the circle, similar to perimeter that we talked about, is circumference. All right? So, circumference deals with that fancy word of pi, P-I. So all about pi. Remember that the symbol looks like this, okay? The definition is that pi represents the ratio of the circumference of the circle to its diameter. The approximation for pi is a decimal is 3.14. That's what we're going to be using a lot to solve these problems. And then our fraction of pi, closest fraction that we get to 3.14 is 22 sevenths, right? So quick review of all that stuff. Now let's get to the examples. On the back side of your notes, quick review. How do we find the circumference of a circle? Well, we're going to use a calculator. We're going to use our circumference formulas. We have two of them. The first one being circumference equals pi times diameter, if we're given the diameter, like we are in example one. In example two, we would use circumference equals 2 pi r. r meaning the radius. The reason why there's a 2 in there, we talked about this before, the relationship between diameter and the radius is that the diameter is twice or times two of the radius and the radius is half of the diameter, all right? So <clears throat> example one, I have a diameter of 13 yards. I need to find the circumference. So I'm gonna use the circumference formula that has diameter in it. So I'm gonna write C equals pi times diameter. Second step after I write my formula is to substitute the values. I'm gonna use 3.14 for pi times the diameter, which is 13. Final step, punch it in on your calculators to find the correct circumference, which would be 40 and 82 hundredths. So my circumference is 40 and 82 hundredths, and that's in yards. Don't forget to label it because it could be inches, feet, miles, yards, we don't know. Example two, <clears throat> now we have a radius of three feet, so I'm using this formula. C equals 2 pi r. I'm replacing pi with 3.14, place the radius with what I know, which, oops, not 5, but 3. So then I multiply them all together on my calculator. I take 2 times 3.14 for pi times 3. I get 18.84 hundredths, and that's in feet. <clears throat> Last example here for finding circumference, we're going to use the pi symbol this time. So we're not replacing the pi symbol with 3.14. We're going to leave it as the pi symbol, kind of like that pi button we talked about on the calculator. So I have a diameter of 20, so I'm going to write this as pi times the diameter. I'm going to write C equals, instead of replacing pi, I'm going to leave the symbol in, but I'm going to replace the diameter's length, which is 20. Now. I can't actually multiply these together because, again, the calculator doesn't do that because pi is such a long, never-ending decimal. We are just going to say that our circumference would be 20 times pi, all right? Again, and that's in inches, so I made it out in inches, all right? There will be some questions like that on your quiz and maybe even on a test or even on the MCAs that talks about using pi symbol for the value pi, which means do not replace it with our decimal approximation of 3.14. All right, now, we didn't talk about this yet, but we have to be able to use the circumference to find the radius or diameter. So we have to kind of work backwards. So here's some examples of solving for the missing length. So they have the circumference, they want to know what the radius is. They have the circumference, they want to know what the diameter is. We can use that same formula and we can just work backwards. This means instead of multiplying, we would be dividing. 
which is what we're going to do in these three examples down here. Right? So, example four. I have a circumference of 25 and 1200 centimeters. They want to know the radius r. So I'm going to write my formula out as c equals 2 pi r. Why that one? Because I have a radius that I'm trying to find. Instead of replacing the pi in the radius, I'm replacing what I know, which is the circumference, 25 and 12 hundredths, equals 2 times pi, which I know of 3.14, times I don't know is the radius. So now I kind of have to work backwards. First, I have to multiply 2 times pi. So I use my calculator to do that. I get 6 and 28 hundredths. Multiply that by r should equal my circumference of 25 and 12 hundredths. Now, this is like a simple one-step equation which we've already solved back in topic five. So what I need to do now is if I need to multiply by a number to get this large number, well, I can divide both sides by 6.28 and that should give me the value of my radius, which is what we're trying to find. So that'll cancel out, leaving me with just my radius r. And if I take my circumference and divide it by 6 and 28 hundredths, I get a radius length of 4. So my radius would be 4 centimeters. All right? That's all we're doing. Now, <clears throat> example 5, they want a diameter. So I'm going to use circumference equals pi times diameter. Again, I know my circumference. So I replace C with 65 and 94 hundredths equals, I know the value of pi, 3.14 times, I don't know the value for D, my diameter. Work backwards, divide by pi. Divide my circumference by pi to find the diameter. If I take 65 and 94 hundredths, divide that by pi. Using my calculator, I get my diameter length of 21. So my diameter in inches is 21 inches. All right? Last example. Now, this time, notice they say the circumference is 24 pi. They're using the symbol for pi again instead of the value. So I want to know the radius r. So I'm going to use c equals 2 pi r. This time, I don't need to replace pi with 3.14 multiplied by 2, then divide. I'm just going to divide by 2. So I'm going to replace my circumference with 24 pi equals 2 pi r. Well, if I divide by both 2 and the pi symbol, they will both cancel out. So that cancels out, leaving me with just my radius r. The pi symbol divided by the pi symbol, if I divide pi by itself, it eliminates just like 2 divided by 2 is 1. Any number divided by itself turns into 1. So I can cross those out. Now I divide 24 by 2, which is 12. So my radius has a length of 12. Radius equals 12, and that's meters. Okay? So there you have it. There's a quick review of how to find circumference if you're given the radius or diameter, and then working backwards to find the radius or diameter if you know circumference. We'll see you next time we start talking about area of surface. Mm -hmm.